I'm going to teach you today how to make one of the simplest blocks in quilt making. It's called the rail fence. Now the rail fence block is going to be constructed of four strips and each strip is going to be cut one and a half inches wide and this is what it's going to look like. To start the process, we're going to lay our fabrics down onto our cutting mat. Now I like to cut multiple layers at a time. I rarely am going to cut just one single layer of fabric at a time. And here's the reason why. When I was a young girl, my father was an engineer at the Ford Motor Company, all the way in Dearborn, which was almost two hours away from my hometown. My dad would drive almost two hours to Dearborn every day, work as an engineer, drive two hours back, and then get on the tractor to start farming. I grew up on a farm with 10 brothers and sisters. I noticed in the fall that when my dad would start doing the harvesting of the corn, he would go out with his one row corn picker. One day I asked my mom, I said, Mom, do you not think that dad realizes that if he had a two row corn picker, he would be done in half the time? She told me that, Nancy, what you don't realize is if your father had a two row corn picker, he would just plant twice as much corn. His, he had only so much time to get the job done, and that time was going to be used wisely. So when it comes to my rotary cutting, I'm going to use the tricks of power cutting and stacking of fabrics to be able to make the process go that much faster. So when I unroll my fabrics, I'm going to stack them up so that each piece is approximately a quarter of an inch from the piece below it. So as you see here, I'm going to stack up four different pieces of fabric, the same four pieces that I want to be in my rail fence. And I can see all those fabrics are very nice and even. Now the first thing I have to do with rotary cutting is square off my right hand edge. I'm going to line up the ruler, line up a horizontal line of the ruler on the bottom fold of the fabric. With my hand in the center of the fabric, I'm going to open my extra large rotary cutter with a very sharp blade. This technique will not work if you have a dull blade in your rotary cutter. It also won't work with a 45 millimeter. You really have to use a 60 millimeter to be able to cut through this many fabrics at once. I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to use some strength as I go all the way through 16 layers of fabric. That's a clean cut. Now I can take my mat, spin it around, and now make the cuts that I need for this quilt. For this quilt, I need one and a half inch wide strips. So with the power cutting techniques that we learned, I can line this up at the six inches on my ruler, make the clean cut, slide the ruler over to the four and a half inch measurement, now over to the three. And to one and a half. Very quickly, I have all the strips I need to make this quilt. Now I'm going to take the strips and go to my sewing machine. I'm going to use these strips, there they are, and I'm going to lay them down in the design that I want. And for this particular block, I'm going to sew the first two strips together, then the three and four together, then I'll put those strips together into a complete set of four. When I sew my strips together, I want them to be right sides together. One trick I do is I always blossom out my fabric so I can see that I have right sides together. As I go to my sewing machine, you're going to see that this is a leader. A leader is just a piece of fabric that you're going to sew over so that when you start sewing anything in your quilt, you're going to not have those threads go down and make a mess on the bottom side. The leader is a really nice way to make your sewing stay nice and neat, and then you won't have all those extra threads hanging around. Later on, we'll talk to you about a perfect quarter inch seam allowance, but with this quilt, I'm going to sew with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Lining the fabric up using my seam guide from the edge of my foot, I have a scant quarter inch seam allowance. 
stopping occasionally to line up the fabrics down the strip. One trick I can tell you is don't rush it and don't take your eyes off the strip while the sewing machine is going. That's a surefire way to run off track. When I get to the end of the strip, I want to stop with just a couple of stitches to go in that strip. Now I can get number three and four in this strip set. Again, putting right sides together, blossoming them out so I can see that I have right sides together. And this is a technique called chain piecing. Chain piecing is going to take the last piece that I just sewed, sew those one or two extra stitches, take one stitch in between the stitches, and then it's going to jump up onto my next strip set. What that's going to do is going to save you time and thread, and you're not going to end up with all those nasty pieces of thread between your strips. It's off the strip, and it's on the strip, just like that. As I get near the end of my strip this time, I'm going to stop the machine again, just a couple of stitches from the end. This time I'm going to reach around and get that leader off. And now it's called an ender. Started as a leader, and now it's going to be an ender. I'm going to sew on to the end of my ender, which is now my leader. So the next time I sew, my machine will be all set up and ready to go. The next step with any quilt block is the pressing. This is a half strip set and I'm going to show you the proper technique for pressing these so your seams end up very nice and flat. With my iron the first step is to set my seam. What that setting of the seam is going to do is it's going to flatten out the threads and the fabric so that when I flip my seam over I'm going to have a really really flat seam. I do use steam in my iron, so when I move my iron, I am never pressing down and moving my iron. I'm always lifting my iron and setting it and giving it a burst of steam. Lifting my iron, setting it, giving it a burst of steam. Lifting, setting, giving a burst of steam. Now I'm going to take the top strip and I'm going to flip it up away from me. As I do that, I'm going to use my fingers to kind of move this seam in the direction I want it to go. Now I'm going to take my iron, I'm going to start it on my bottom piece. As I slide it up toward the top piece, I slightly tip my iron so that it doesn't leave a crease in my seam. Then I give it a steam, move my iron to the bottom piece, tip it up slightly, slide it to the top, give it a burst of steam. Start on the bottom, tip it slightly, push it up, a burst of steam, and the very end. I never ever trust what has happened on the underside of my seam. I'm always going to flip it over and make sure that the seam is pressed properly and then just run my iron over it one more time. Now I'm going to press my other strip set. Setting the seam first, now flip up the top piece, finger pressing holding it in place, start your iron on the bottom piece, tip it slightly to slide it up to open that seam completely. One thing you need to remember in quilt making is typically you're going to be working with 100% cotton fabrics. When you're working with 100% cotton fabrics, you want your iron set, set at the hottest setting and you don't need to worry about burning your fabric. I've now left that iron on that fabric for a full 10 seconds. The fabric is not going to be hurt. You need to be very, very patient with your pressing when it comes to quilt making. Now my strip sets are completely pressed and I'm going to sew my center seam. Flipping them over, 
blossoming it out so that I know I have my right sides together. My leader is already in my sewing machine, so I'm ready to go. I'm always trying to think of ways to make the process a little bit quicker. Not so much that I'm in a big hurry, just because there is new fabric and new patterns that I still want to sew. If I'm taking too long with each quilt I make, I'm never going to get to all that stash of fabric that I have in my studio. As I come near the end of the strip again, I'm going to stop the machine, come to the leader, pull it off, and now it becomes my ender. Now with this strip set, I want my final result With this strip set, I want my final result to be all pressed in the same direction. So when I'm looking at the back of my piece, I need to plan which direction do I want that seam to go. I want this seam to go toward this dark green fabric. If I want the seam to go toward the dark green fabric, I need to start with that dark green fabric on top. I'm going to set the seam. Flip up the top piece and press again, starting at the bottom, tipping the iron slightly to press that seam open. And just like always, I never trust what's going on the back side. I'm going to flip it over, check that seam out, give it one final press, trying to keep things as straight as possible. So now my strip sets are complete. It's time to cut them. Just like when I was cutting the strips, when it comes to cutting the segments, I'm going to use the same processes. I'm going to try to work more than one fabric at a time. I want this to go quick and precise. Got a line Take my strip set and fold it in half, lining it up so that the raw edge is on my right hand side. One is never good enough. I'm going to take my second strip set and this time I'm going to offset it about a quarter of an inch again so that the seams are not stacked up really high underneath so that my ruler won't actually tip on the top of my strip sets. With my raw edge on the right side, I'm going to line up a horizontal line of my ruler now on the center seam of my strip set. Going to cut, shut my blade, have, throw the extras away, turn my mat. Now this time, I need to cut these into four and a half inches. So I'm going to use my 12 and a half inch ruler. This is going to allow me to cut two four and a half inch segments in the power cutting technique. So four and a half plus four and a half makes nine. I'm going to line up the left side of my ruler at nine. I'm going to line up one of the horizontal lines of the ruler on the center seam. Cut once at four and a half. I'm sorry, cut once at nine. Move it over. Now cut again. Oops at four and a half. Move this over. Again, start at nine. Lining the horizontal seam up on the center strip. Slide it over to four and a half inches. So I've now got enough blocks for, I've got enough segments for four blocks. This last piece is still big enough to get a four and a half inch segment out of it. So if you unfold it, you are going to have to do a, raw, a straight edge cut again. Spin that around and I can get two more four and a half inch segments out of that. 
Now I'm going to lay this down into the design. A rail fence is going to have a horizontal strip set, then a vertical strip set. The bottom row is going to be a vertical strip set. Oops, I'm sorry, a horizontal strip set in the same location, in the same design location of your fabrics as the top one. Then the last one is again going to be a horizontal strip set. So you'll see what that's going to look like. When I'm sewing these together, I'm going to take the strip set that is horizontal and I'm going to flip it over onto the vertical strip set. And the same thing down here. So this time I'm folding from the right to the left. One thing that really bothers me when I'm sewing is what the direction that my seams are going. When I am sewing this seam, I don't want to sew with my sewing machine pushing against the seams that I have pressed. If I do that, there's a tendency that my machine is going to flip those seams over and it'll be a mess on the back side. So I always try to plan it so that when I'm sewing, those seams are going in the direction that's going to go smooth with my sewing machine. Starting with my leader, sewing onto my strip set. Stopping just a couple stitches from the end and sewing again. So my strip sets, my seams are actually going in the direction that's going to make it easy to go through the sewing machine. In a real quilt, you know I'd be sewing more than two of these at a time, so I would actually take that entire stack, sew anywhere from 16 to 32 blocks at a time, trying to make things go as efficiently as possible. Cut my strip set off the back and cut my pieces apart. Now I need to press these seams. One trick that I'll tell you about pressing is always try to press to the point of least resistance. And this is what I mean. If I open this, these two segments apart, you're going to see that these seams really want to be laid to the left hand side. If I press this seam to the right hand side, that is going to create a lot of bulk right here on this seam. One tip I'd like to give you with your pressing is to always try to press to the point of least resistance. It won't always work, but if you try, you're going to make your quilt top much flatter and it's going to be a lot easier to quilt. So with this strip set, if I hold it open, I can see that these seams actually want to go to the left. If I try to press those seams to the right hand side, there's going to be a lot of bulk right here where there'll be eight layers of fabric. So whenever possible, press to the point of least resistance. So if I want this seam to go toward this fabric, I'm going to start with that fabric on top, set my seam, and flip that piece up. And then my iron can just glide over that seam and press that in the direction I wanted. Same thing here. I'm going to start with that fabric on top, set the seam, flip the top fabric up, and my iron will glide to keep that seam flat. Now my two segments are done, and I'm ready to put the four segments together to create the rail fence block. When you look at the back side of the block, it's always important that you look at the way that your seams are going to connect. This block is pressed to the left. This block is pressed to the right. So that this seam in the middle will be able to butt together really snugly and give me a really crisp seam. So these come together. It slides. It's snuggled together. I can take a pin and put a pin in place to hold that. When I take this to the sewing machine, I want to press in the direction that most of my seams are going to make it run through smoothly. Coming off my leader, 
onto my block. I want to stop right away and make sure all my seams are going in the direction I want them before I continue. As I get near the center seam, I want to take extra care that the seams are going in the direction that I wanted them to go before I take my pin out. Now I can continue over my seam and go all the way to the end. Now I'm going to show you a really cool technique for making the center seam be very, very flat. As you look at this center seam, you can see here where the stitching from putting the two blocks together is crossed over by the final seam. If I open this block up, and just decide to press the seam in one direction, that is gonna cause a lot of bulk in my seam. This seam will end up with almost not eight layers of fabric, and this seam will have none. That extra bulk in the center is gonna be a very big pain to quilt over. So instead, I wanna open up that seam. To do that, if I use my seam ripper, I can just pluck out that seam. I don't cut the seam, I just pluck it out till, it's, till it is um, free to the last seam that went over, and then do that on the other side too. So now I have opened up just those last stitches. Now when I open this up to press it, I can press this seam in one direction, and the second seam in the opposite direction, and that will actually cause what I call seam separating in the very middle of the block. In the case of this block, it actually creates a teeny tiny little four patch. That way you know you've done it right. I can flip it over to the front side, give it another pressing. When I am making quilts, no block is done until it's been spray sized nice and crisp. Gonna be very patient with my pressing. I want the spray sizing to completely dry. By spray sizing my block, it's gonna keep all the seams the way that I wanted them to begin with when I'm storing my blocks before I actually finish my quilt. It also keeps the fabrics from fraying. So if you hate it when you open up the box, you're going to work back on the quilt again and you notice that there's all these little um, shreds of fabric all over the place, that's the fraying of the fabric and that drives me crazy. And then I'm gonna to go to the front side, give it one final pressing. And that block is done. That's your real fence block.